Now, um, when you don't have all of the other information. So these examples up here were pretty easy because you're just missing one variable. Now, a lot of the times though, we wanna try to calculate K and we only have like one equilibrium concentration. Um, and there are ways to do that. And that's called using an ice table. You will be using a lot of ice tables in this semester. So you really should pay attention and get used to them. Um, ice tables can solve a lot of problems. If you can do ice tables and you can do stoichiometry um, or dimensional analysis, you should be able to solve like every problem there is in chemistry. So um, I'm going to show you how to do an ice table. Essentially, if something is a reversible reaction, you should be able to do an ice table to figure out concentrations. Okay, so let's say you need to find multiple equilibrium concentrations instead of just one, or you need to calculate Kc or Kp, and all I gave you was the initial concentrations and like one the equilibrium concentration. Um, there's a whole bunch of uses for ICE tables. So what does ICE stand for and how do I set it up? So I stands for initial, okay? So like the starting amounts of any reactants or products reactants or product starting amount. Okay, so like how much you started out with. Um, so usually we start with reactants and we wanna know how many products there are at the end, but if it's reversible, we should have some reactants and left over also. So there should be reactants and products in there at the same time. So the concentrations are gonna change and the C stands for how much they're going to change by change in concentration. Okay, so these are stoichiometric, stoichiometric, and anytime I mention stoichiometry or stoichiometric, that just means that we're going to have to bring in the ratios of all of the reactants and products. Okay, so those coefficients are going to be really important. Um, so those are stoichiometric. Um, they're going to use those coefficients in order to figure out the change. And then E, of course, stands for the equilibrium amount. Um, which is just a combination of my starting amount, my initial, and the change. Combo of I and C. All right. So one thing that's extremely important to remember for ice tables is you have to be in molarity or pressure. You cannot just use moles. It has to be moles per liter. It has to be some type of concentration or the values you would plug into a K equation, right? So um, that's gonna be important to make sure you're in molarity because a lot of times I'll just give you moles, but I will also give you liters and you need to take that into consideration. So this is how we set these up. I have my reactants, I have my products, okay? So along the side, I'm going to set up an I, C, E table. C, E. Okay, and we can do it for reactants and products. So you kind of want to separate everything out. Um, so I is initially how much I started with. So it says I have a four liter flask has 0.20 moles of N2O4. So remember this has to be concentration. So I'm going to be 0 0.20 moles over four liters. So whatever that is for molarity. If I don't mention the products, that means I didn't start with any. Okay, so zero. So if it's unlisted, it's none. So none if unlisted. Okay, you can assume that. All right. Now, the change, remember, I said is stoichiometric. So first of all, these need to have a sign. And what I mean by that is you need to make it negative if it's decreasing in amount and positive if it's increasing in amount. Okay, in order for this to reach equilibrium, we know that some of products are going to have to be made. In order to get a K value, we're gonna to have to have some reactants gone, used up to make some of the products. So we actually know that the reactants were going to lose some because some of them are going to be made into products. So most of the time, your reactants are negative and your products are positive, not always, and I'll talk about that later. Now, remember I said these are stoichiometric, so we need to take into account their coefficients. So this one changes by amount x, whatever that is, and this one will change by amount 2x because it has a coefficient of 2. So your change rows are always going to look like this. They're going to have x's, they should have a sign, and the coefficient should be brought down as well. And I said equilibrium is just these combined. So 0.20 over 4 is 0.05 minus x, and then zero plus two x is just two x. All right, so all I did here was add i and c. 
Now, if this was an actual problem, I'd have to give you more information to actually figure something out, but this is how you set up your ice tables. All right, so we're gonna do some example problems. The only way to get good at these is to go through examples. So there are multiple on Chem 101 that I, I left out the drag and drop ones because they're kind of a pain. And um, I'm gonna go through ones on here and there's some in, or one or two, not very many, in the group activity for this unit. Okay, so solving ice problems. Essentially, you need to set up your ice table and then you can set up an equation that equals to K. So like K equals products over reactants. So if you set up those two things, you can solve for whatever the problem is solving for, okay? So example number eight, I'm gonna walk through. I gave you a lot of space for this one uh, for a reason. So decomposition of SO3, I gave you the reaction here, is initially charged with 0.012 moles of SO3. Uh, so I know that's initial, initially. If at equilibrium, I told you one of the equilibrium concentrations. Now, if I gave you another one, we would have been able to figure this out without having to set up an ice table, but I only gave you one. So we will have to set up an ice table then what is the value of the equilibrium constant? So the whole goal is to figure out, okay. All right, so I'm gonna set up an ice table. Usually I will rewrite the equation, just kind of spread out so I can have some space. T plus O2. Okay, I'm gonna do my initial. So initially, let's see, I put in 0.012 moles in two Liter. So I'm just going to write them here, 0.012 over 2, whatever that is. I didn't start with any products. Okay. So my change, I know I'm going to use up some of these. And instead of being x, this is 2x because the coefficient is 2. That one's going to change by 2x. And I'm going to make some products. So this one's going to be positive 2x. And this one is just going to be positive 1x because it, it doesn't have a coefficient. Okay, so stoichiometric coefficients brought down. Equilibrium is these just combined. So this is 0 0.006 minus 2x. This is 2x and this is x. All right, now the other thing I said is we have to set up a K equation. Now we know for this equilibrium that K is going to be SO2 squared times O2 over SO3 squared, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna plug in or I wanna solve for X somehow. All right, now if I gave you K, we could kind of solve for X that way. But in this case, I have one more piece of information. I said at equilibrium, the vessel has this many moles of SO3. So I can actually go down here to SO3. I know that this equals whatever that molarity is, 0 0.0048 over, two moles per liter, right? That's a molarity. So I can actually solve for X this way. So I'm gonna do that, a 0 0.006 minus two X equals, I'm gonna put my work over here. So 0 0.006 minus two X equals mm, 0 0.0048 over two. No, oh, I was looking at the wrong problem. Okay, I got that X, is 0 0.0018, okay? Let me erase this down here since I rewrote it over there. Okay, so I know X now, so I can actually solve for all of these concentrations and then I could plug them back into K. So I already know this one is whatever 0 0.0048 over two is. So that was point, Oh, the silly math flip. So this one is point, oh, come on, let me write. There, point zero zero two four. right? I already know that one. I know this one is 2x, so two times point zero zero one eight. So this one is point zero zero three six molar. And this one is just x, so it's point zero zero one eight molar. Now that I have all these equilibrium concentrations, I can plug them into my K equation and solve for K. So I would do 0 0.0036 squared times 0 0.0018 all over 0 0.0024 squared. Okay, you should end up with K is 0 0.0061. No units on K. All right, so that's kind of one example of a standard ice problem. Okay, if you can set up K and you can set up your ice table, I will have given you some other number that you can use to actually calculate what I'm looking for. Okay, so if you want, um, I would try 
examples number nine and 10 by yourself. I am going to walk through nine really quick because it talks about dissociation instead of um, just what the equilibrium amount is. So like I said, I'm going to walk through nine. I'm not going to walk through 10, uh, but I would try these and then check your answers. Okay. So uh, number nine, I'm going to set up this way. I got my ice. Let's see. E. Um, let's see. I got a five liter flask. And 0.10 moles of N2O4. So let's see, that's 0.1, right? Nope, oh, sorry, that's not 0.1. I was looking at the wrong problem again. That is 0.1 over 5, right? Yes, yeah, so that's 0 0.015. Two molar. No. Sorry. Math today. Okay, so initially this is actually 0 0.02. I was doing the math for the other one, and I didn't put any of this in to begin with. So I know my chain is going to be minus x. This one is going to be plus 2x. So this is 0 0.02 minus x, and this is 2x. Awesome. So here's the thing. The only other information I gave you is that it's 24% dissociated, and I'm trying to find k. Now, 24% dissociated, 24% dissociated just means that it will have broken down by 24%. So X, the change is going to be 24%. So what is 24% of what I started with? O2 times 0.24 is 0 0.0048. So X is this, 24% is x. Okay, so now I have x. I can plug this in. I can find each of these. So this is going to be 0 0.0152 molar for this guy. And 2x then is 0 0.0096 molar. And I can plug these into my k equation. And I know k is NO2 squared over N2O4. Plug these in. I got 0 0.0096 squared over 0 0.0152 should get 0 0.0061. Oh my gosh, that's what I did. And the top one, you should not have gotten 0 0.0061. That one should have been 1.7. I am losing my mind. Okay, so I changed it. Example number eight should have been 1.7. Example number nine should be 0 0.0061. Got a whole lot of math going on. Sorry, guys. Um, so that's what you should get for that. So that's another way to do it. So try number 10 by yourself. Pause it, give it a shot, and come back and look at the work that I have. Okay, so what you might have noticed in this one is the other piece of information I gave you is a K value this time, not one of the equilibrium concentrations. So I actually haven't finished this yet. I got my ice table all set up. Make sure your ice table is right. And I have 49.7 equals. And then what I did is I substituted in these values in my K equation. So it should be HI squared. So I took HI, which is 2X squared, over 0.1 minus X, and I squared it because it's just H2 times I2, and they're the same. So this is the equation that I have set up to solve for X, okay? So essentially, again, what I did is I plugged in my equilibrium concentrations into my K equation, and now I can solve for X. This one's actually pretty easy because I can just square root it to get rid of these squares. Um, if this was not uh, like this on the bottom, you would have to use the quadratic equation. Uh, but this one's actually pretty good because essentially the square root of 49.7 is 2x over 0.1 minus x. And then you can use your solver on your calculator if you want to, or you can do all the algebra by hand. Should get that x is 0 0.0779. All right, so what are we even trying to find here, right? It says, what is the equilibrium composition? That means like, what are each of the equilibrium concentrations? So I'm gonna plug in my X and then I will get that this is 0 0.0221 molar. This one is point the same, 221 molar. And this one is 0.1558 molar. Man, eh, that's too many simplicities, but that's okay. So these are each of my concentrations. So these are the answers I'm looking for. Okay, concentration for each one. All right. Now, example number 11 says, suppose that we change the previous problem by increasing the amount of I2 to one. So the only thing that that would change is the I2 value, which means the algebra gets a whole lot more difficult. So it's not that this problem is really much different. It's just that your setup is going to be different and then you have to do some algebra. So I'm going to set this one up. So try to set that one up if you can and then check your answer there. 
Okay, so here's the deal. The only difference in my setup of equation is this 0.2 minus x right here. That's what you get for I2 instead. So in order to solve for this, you have to use the quadratic equation. I am not going to show all the algebra here. You can use the solver on your calculator if you want to. But then I get that x is one of these two values. Now you're going to get two values. Only one of them is going to work, okay? Reason being, you can never have a negative molarity of something. That would mean you have a negative amount, um, which is completely impossible. So only one of these, when you plug X back in to these down here, are actually going to result in numbers that work. And in this case, that is this value. Because this one's too big, I end up with negative molarities. So if you do your math right, you should get that your H2 concentration is 0 0.0066 molar. Your I2 concentration is point 1066 molar, right? Because I increased it. And my HI concentration is 0.1868 molar. Okay, now you can kind of do a double check on any of these, right? If you get all these concentrations, if I plug them back into my K equation, I should get the K value that I gave you to begin with, right? So um, if you want to double check yourself, that's a good way to do that. Uh, but this does require a decent amount of math. Okay. All right. Number 12 is a perfect one for you to try by yourself, especially after doing all of these examples, because it's just a combination of things that we have been doing. So pause it. Definitely try this one on your own. All right. So what I got here is I got everything set up. Make sure your setup looks good. Um, this one's got two squares again. So that kind of helps out our math a little bit. Should be x squared over 0.40x squared. Those are the same thing. Equals 11.8 because that's my k value. I solved for x, plugged them back in, and I got these values. Now, these are subtraction. That's why I only have one sig fig in these answers. Try to keep that in mind.